My name is Addison Heron Wheeler and my research project is the Richmond Poetry Miscellany. I initially wanted to do the miscellany format because of the class I took with Professor Eckhart, my mentor. I thought the idea of a chronological ordering of poetry was really cool. I had the idea to make a small, cheap little zine style thing that would kind of encompass everything I was trying to do, but in a new sort of hip format. At first glance, it looks like it could be about music or politics or anything, but then upon closer inspection, there's a lot of good poetry in there. With some of the people like um, Edgar Allan Poe and Tom Wolfe, I expected them to make some sort of comment on city life or city living, but I was surprised at sort of the universality of, you know, stuff that's from the 1400s to now and how people still seem to look at nature and the city in the same way. Edgar Allan Poe lived a lot of different places on the East Coast. He didn't always live in Richmond, and he never wrote a poem specifically about Richmond, but um, the poem The Doomed City that was originally called The City in the Sea is um, it's kind of a dystopian poem about the city and how the city kind of corrupts people. Lo, death hath reared himself a throne in a strange city all alone, far down within the dim west and the good, and the bad, and the worst, and the best have gone to their eternal rest. Finding other things like that Keska Waterfield poem at the very end about the river, it's a local person that I would have never probably discovered, but her work is actually really good. The bulb partly lighting the bridge is soon to blow. Even now it brinks slowly from its hold on the boathouse dormer. I'm not undone by inconstancy. It glows yellow behind the trees. And I study the silent shadow forest on my thighs on my arms lying still in my lap. It fades and no one could make out how tired I've become. My mom told me about William Styron who wrote these kind of depressing novels, but they had these beautiful descriptions of cities and he just used this awesome imagery. And so I picked a, pa a passage out and if I break down that passage, it actually sounds like a poem. Riding down to Port Warwick from Richmond, the train begins to pick up speed on the outskirts of the city past the tobacco factories with their ever-present haze of acrid Swedish dust, and past the rows of uniformly brown clapboard houses which stretch down the hilly streets for miles, it seems, the hundreds of rooftops all reflecting the pale light of dawn. I think there's a lot of stuff that I intended on including that I had already been a big fan of, and then a lot of new stuff that I discovered too. For the most part, I'm just astounded that I was able to make something like this that's so thorough and so interesting.